Nigeria, good morning, Adawa. Welcome to your go to breakfast show live on TV Go to. At this point, I think it's fair to say compliments of the season because we're just counting down. Well, over just five days before yeah. the big day itself. Thank you very much for joining the show. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. And I'm Brenda Enda. It's good to have you join us on Safia Breakfast Show this wonderful morning. It's been an interesting evening. Um, weekend, I beg your pardon. <laughs> um, <laughs> For obvious reasons, there's been a lot of uh, local activities here in the state. Uh, the weekend was filled with a lot of um, traditional activities, turbulent ceremonies here in Yola, turbulent ceremonies or coronations, not coronations actually, turbulent ceremonies uh, and award of titles in uh, the Bachamai Kingdom over the weekend also. But to crown it all, I think finally uh, the king has been crowned as the goat of Football, We've seen the, the greatest reboot. athlete of all time, so to say. Now, Messi's Argentina won the World Cup yesterday, and I must say that for obvious reasons, I think this is by far the most memorable, my favorite World Cup final, and I think the most interesting, entertaining. I don't know. There's so many superlatives that you can use to describe I, this one. I, I, but yes, did you watch the game? I did. Oh I did. I, I think so it's many the best highs, I have so many watched. Lows. Is is the best competition I have seen so mm. far. Is the best um, struggle I, I have seen. Uh, it could have gone either way. It, it, exactly. At first, at first, you get the feeling that it was Argentina's night. Sure. Because they were two 0 up in the first half, um, and they were dominating. Even when the, the game resumed for the second half. They were still, you know, the they, they still had the upper yeah, hand. Yeah. And then boom, before you knew it, in less than three minutes, everything changed. And you get the sense that, oh my God, Argentina could lose this. And yeah, and listen. You, you wouldn't even know who you're supporting. Because I, you're, no, you're I, I, knew, I knew who I wanted to support. I knew who okay. I wanted. I wanted Lionel Messi to win for obvious reasons. Because I feel like the World Cup has eluded him for a very long time. And if there's any player uh, that is deserving of a World Cup, it is Lionel Messi. Um, the first time I've ever, I ever saw him back in 2005 play was during the under 20s World Cup. And when they picked Nigeria to win, I, I never liked the guy. Just because of that. But he's that good. And, uh, you know, he kind of grows up, he grows on you. No, because sure. you obviously will be in denial to say that he's not that great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the greatness is, is obviously there. And one thing about football is the fact that, aside from the fact that it united the entire world, they're talking about some full billion no. views yesterday Brenda the eyes of the world was solely on that game and that is just how interesting and entertaining the game is but also we also saw a glimpse that the next generation is going to be great also mm -hmm. because you saw Kylian Mbappe yeah. rise to the very top of cream de la cream of football because his confidence is that good Brenda he took three penalty kicks yesterday and didn't miss once and he didn't even flinch it didn't even bother him that uh, Martinez was that good of a goalkeeper because he has he's put Argentina in a position where in the, in the quarterfinals they, they defeated Netherlands and he was the star of the show. And you know when a goalkeeper is that good at you know keeping like putting off penalties, you, 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 your confidence take a hit. You don't know whether he's going to stop yours because he stopped so many other uh, penalties before them. But three in one game, oh my goodness. Um, Kylian Mbappe is, is on another level himself and I think that um, the future of football is in safe hands. We're going to get more entertained uh, as the years go by, even when the likes of Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo decide to hang up their boot. But my goodness, the Qatar 2020 World Cup is one of the best so far. I mean, I've seen the 98, 20, 2002, 2006, 2010 in South Africa, 2014, 2018. I think this one's the best so far. This one is the best so far, Brenda. Without a doubt, for me anyway. <laughs> for me anyway. And there are many others too. Because uh, when you look at the reactions mm. from social media angle mm. and see how people were also training their opinions yeah. about how mm. the, the Qatar 2022 mm. ended, I, I think a lot of persons were able to do this uh, perfect sports analysis to understand that, okay, what made this different from what yeah. we used to watch. And It wasn't they, just the games, Brenda. Exactly. First of all, Let's talk about the upsets. Yeah. It was Saudi Arabia beating Argentina in the first place. Yeah. You, you were like, well, oh. What? That's what I was telling you. What I, I happened? I discussed this with Aaron when I came in. I was like, it doesn't like, matter at the beginning. The beginning doesn't like, really matter. What happened? To some and then you had Morocco go all the way to the semi finals. Mm -hmm. And you had 
teams like Germany not making it out of the group, Spain losing out to Morocco. There were so many games that were so so many twists and turns. <laughs> and and look at the final, Brenda. Oh my goodness! I think um, and the organization also perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, beautiful stadiums. Mm -hmm. Listen. Uh, I wish many more World Cups would be I, I like this. I think this is uh, one of those uh, World Cup where you see a lot of uh, fans wanting to go there to watch, yeah. not just hanging around yeah. their home as well. They were like, okay, you know what? I, I'm going to Listen, continue to watch this for myself. I, 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 I love it when I watch the World Cup and Nigeria is involved. But trust me, when you don't have a dog in the fight, Brenda, it makes it a lot more interesting to watch. Because either way, you're not going to be directly affected <laughs> exactly. by it. Exactly. So you, but, yeah. you just be like Chris. <laughs> <laughs> now Chris is a floater. I mean, he's anywhere Belefe is pretty exactly. much. Uh, but anyway, he's passionate about the game, so I, I give him that. But obviously, uh, the World Cup has come to an end, mm -hmm. and um, we we'll go back to our At regular least routine. To be back home. Do you think yeah. uh, the Premier League will be back I next know weekend after uh, on Christmas before, weekend? Before Christmas, uh, we are no, going Christmas to have weekend. everybody around. Yeah. Uh, yes, you're going to yeah. help in some of those activities we were doing all alone. How, how are things building up for the Christmas though? Okay. Do you think people are, are getting in the mood, economically speaking or financially mm -hmm. speaking? Because that is what well, it boils you, well, down to sometimes. When you look at it uh, economically, uh, I feel people are just uh, fixing themselves into the situation. They are not overbeating it, yes, uh, because I have met a couple of friends and when I just throw this conversation to them, uh, how far how are we going to say with ah, as you thank god it's even on sunday so mm. we just uh, make it look like sunday like it is <laughs> it's deliberate you know and you have to deliberately manage every situation and yeah. throw yourself into uh the situation and try to fine tune in your own way don't fight it yeah. the times are difficult from all yeah. angles mm. don't hang your neck up because you, you are not able to meet up economically or something but make it very beautiful for yourself and your family. Listen, um, my father will always say to me, live within your means. And true. and also, there is a great uh, business philosophy that you try to live below your means. That way you can sustain that well, lifestyle exactly. throughout your life. I, I, I you will never go under if you live below your means. I, I remember saying with my mom, she will tell yeah. you don't spend more than what you earn. Yeah, yes, and, they all, say, and they always say, they always say also that you you save before you spend. Mm -hmm. You don't save after you spend because most of the time what you have left is, is insignificant. Mm -hmm. But the point about festivities are that we're always used to going all out because mm -hmm. we, we want to make it feel special because it is special, isn't it? Uh, and, and I don't blame people for wanting to, to make it feel special for their wives, for their sons, for their daughters, mm -hmm. for their families and their relatives and things like that. But the reality of it is that we're, 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 we live in a time where you're never really certain about how tomorrow is going to look like. Right. So the little resources you have, you can make you know, good use of it, right? Um, have a good meal. If you're able to buy new clothing for your kids, for, for your friends, for your wards, good for you. However, do not go overboard. Uh, I see a lot of people willing to put themselves in debt before the new year. And this is, this is one of the things I'm, I'm going to work on. Every little debt you have, try and sort it out before you go into it. It's always a bad thing to always go into the new year with so much debt from last year. All right? So this it goes to, this to, goes to individuals and also this goes to companies who are owing. Whoever it is that they're owing. You know? yeah. Try to start the new year on a clean slate. Pay off How about workers, that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Whatever. I, I, I've not pay off, yeah. but you know. Settle your debts. Just, just do Settle that. your yeah. debt before the new year. Yes, yeah. um, See, it, good enough that we it, talk it about. It allows you to that. start the year with a good feeling that exactly. you know this is a clean slate, See, new chapter. Like we used to say, new year resolutions are a whole lot. Do you yeah. get? People, people will try to just uh, put up this idea about okay, I my new year resolution is I, I don't want to. See, the thing is, yeah. you will not want to do that. But in your head, you have plans already yeah. on how you really want to do some stuff. Good enough that when you're going into New Year and you've settled up some debts, I, I feel you're, you're, you're helping yourself yeah. from a whole lot of burdens. Like the first quarter is not always funny mm. of every year. First quarter entirely. School fees, I mean, house I, rent. I, I to, and, and there, there's a whole lot in, we, in, in, we, in the first quarter. I remember quarter. us talking about this last year. And that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm very grateful to be alive today that you know we get to experience 
how we intended to implement some of the plans that we have. A lot of people who had very good plans, you could not live um, <laughs> this long, this long to have actually um, actualize uh, any of it. So this is another circle again, where you could possibly end the year on a very big note. And sometimes, for me, I think from my, some of my earliest memories of whether it's Christmas or celebrate, for instance, it's always about the, the excitement in the air that a lot of people are back home. That everybody is yeah. doing the same thing. Everybody's excited about the same thing. That to me is more important than, obviously as kids, all we care about is showing off our new clothes to our friends, right? So if you can do that, it's a good, it's a good thing. But also understand that the current reality is that there is a there is a possibility that you could go in tomorrow and you would have to pay for you know the ramifications or deal with the consequences of spending everything you've got during the holidays and then you have to consider as Brenda said um, school fees rent for some people and also starting the new year there's obviously the inflation that is still mm -hmm. rising steadily and we know that during the, this festive period there is a hike yeah. in some of the commodity yeah. prices, right? So it means that beyond just planning for the Christmas, you have to plan for the new year yeah. and what will sustain you throughout oh, this sure. uh, particular uh, yeah. period. And, so some, which, what is happening uh, right now? Are instead you, of buying that 25,000 Naira sateen material, maybe you could go for something around 10,000 Naira, for instance. We I mean, have my, beautiful if, if, Ankaras yeah. that are yeah. even less than that. Just give it a perfect so yeah. Unless you're very certain you can afford it. I mean, sure. you go all out. Right, so um, Akon says, before he buys anything, he makes sure that he can afford it three times. Right, yeah, so I if he can afford it three times, he'll buy good. it once. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah. But I if he can't buy it three times, no, he's not going to go for it. Yeah. That's, that's his policy. That's a, that's a good that's, idea. Yeah, and that's that's a very a good, good idea, idea too. Yeah. I mean, that makes sure that you have enough in the tank to do something else. But if that's all your true. money is going to go into all no, of these no, things, no. Um, but anyway, people will still do what they want what to do, Brenda. Yes. Ah, we wish you it's a Merry we're, Christmas. We're, we're <laughs> pouring water on a dog mm, bag, mm. you know. Sometimes, it, it, I just feel people are, are being too, too intentional mm. about some certain decisions. It's, it's, it's and, tradition. And, uh, it's tradition. Yes, the tradition it, of going all out on, on while, Christmas while has, has been there for a very long time. For school fees and that, I, I'll f I feel what should uh, what people should do right now is to buy for stuff. For me, because uh, of uh, the flooding issue we had and how farmlands were submerged, yeah, this, this, how this, uh, this still food concern. security is a concern. Yeah. You know, so the shocker for you should okay. You should be like okay. You know what? I I don't know how January will look like. Let me just store some food stuff for for the family. I I know a particular family where. Uh, every year Christmas, they don't cook. He makes that special in his home. He says, you know, we're going out today. So they choose one of these uh, restaurants and go there, have fun. That's Christmas for him and his family. I was like, beautiful idea. Like, fantastic idea. That's a very stingy individual. Goodness. <laughs> Very I saw that coming, There's nothing right? beautiful about that idea. Most, most families take your family out, sure. Take the kids to the park, sure. But eating <laughs> in a restaurant on Christmas, who does that? He does that. Like it's a it's, it's a tradition. As he did say, it's a it's tradition. A, it's for a him. very silly idea, tradition. <laughs> people cook, they share food items. I'm very sure there's so many people that bring now food to that their food house. Security is a problem. How Brenda, do you manage this? Don't be pushing that kind of agenda on our, on on very good natured African people who are very good at sharing. The rice and the neighbors. Yeah, I mean, is he gonna buy the, the, the food from the restaurant to go and give his neighbors? As it stands right now, a lot of people cannot afford rice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have not been able to afford rice for a very long time. <laughs> oh, you know? rice yeah. used to be uh, yeah. one of the in things. It is, it's still the staple food. But what I'm saying is, you know, in the spirit of Christmas, sharing is one of those things that makes us feel whole. It's Christmas. Right? So if if all of my neighbors decide to go and eat at a restaurant on You're not Christmas, getting Christmas because rice. they're trying to be economical <laughs> with their pockets, do you think I, they will ever, I, I would think about them on Saturday? Why not? Really? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I could easily go to the restaurant too. <laughs> Let everybody. In fact, all the rest, restaurant I'm shops the can bills. open. Can, I'm paying the yeah. bills. But I am bringing my neighbors to this restaurant. To each, and I'm <laughs> to each his own. You have a small family, obviously. I mean, you want to make yourself feel good. There's no problem about that. Uh, buying ice cream. Yeah, but think about your neighbors. Think about your friends who would bring That's Christmas, Christmas food for them. 
and uh, they would expect you to reciprocate. And I, I, I used to tell, uh, I think my, I remember having a conversation with my dad some years ago where he will always ask this question, how many people are we feeding this year? Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because he knows certainly. You have to have a list. Yes. Especially so it, for the drinks, uh -huh. for the food, for the few the, chickens the, do get, or pieces of meat. Like and these are things that are very expensive yeah. at this time so of the year. So you'll be like, okay, are, we, are you doing pounded cocoa yam too? Because I know you are varieties. You say, okay, we're giving the, because there are specific people you're giving rice to that will appreciate rice. There are other persons that you give them food, like two and the rest of really? them. Really? You cook two on Christmas? We do. Special right. meals. Because the rice is everywhere. Mm. So you, you try to change uh, your varieties. You decide to do some small jobs that. I think I think we should stop talking about chin -chin. food because like I, 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 I miss the chin chin part, <laughs> right? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, chin chin, yeah, sure, yeah. definitely. I, I miss you know the small small ones. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, it makes it uh, satisfying. Mm. I, I also when you come, we're just in your munching something. Yeah. yeah. It's um uh, it's a good feeling, and we wish everybody um as success we've, as we've in always planning. said. It's Christmas, not about yeah. your, your size now, it's about the material. Mm, yes, yeah. the size can grow overnight and your material may you not say, give you... Cut your cloth, according, cut your coat according to your cloth or live within your means or below it, but never above it. Please, yeah. never above it. You cannot afford it. Tell madam you cannot afford three well, chickens. When she brings the lease, okay? trying to cut yeah. it down. And so be very realistic because rent is around the corner. Oh, if you yeah. have kids in school, oh, school fees yeah. are around the corner. And trust me, you're still going to be the one to deal with that reality also. But all things uh, put together, this Christmas is about the simplest things, merriment. And of course, uh, sharing that experience with loved ones, friends and families um, alike. Did you, by any chance, get to see the new note? I did. You have I, 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 no, no. Yet. So you, you were busy looking at the money from... No, I I have friends far. that mm. came from Abuja, mm. and uh, you know them with you know the Abuja thing in people's head, mm. and uh, how they like to show off about everything. <laughs> you know, that's how we categorize them sometimes. We, when you're not there, you just be like they're showing off. Okay. okay. Yes, I, I had a feel of it. I I had a feel of two hundred naira, five hundred naira, thousand naira. Mm. Else, but I had questions about it. So we, we bantered as always, and as Nigerians, yes, and. They drew my attention to a particular thing mm -hmm. where I was worried that this is going to be a problem because uh, we Nigerians are good with uh, just personal opinions and it's end there. We don't go all out to, to put up studies about certain mm -hmm. happenings. Like when they drew my attention to a fake note, mm -hmm. like already there's a fake note in circulation. I mean, it's to respect it. Yeah. Definitely. So, I, I was uh, being educated on how to differentiate fake notes and uh, the, the the original uh, uh, Nara notes. And to that extent, how much of Nigerians have that uh, knowledge mm. of differentiating these two? That was my problem. Because if I, for one, was told this is going to look, uh, this is mm. the look of fake, fake Nara notes, then th there's a concern for yeah. me. Yeah, there's, there is that, that concern that counterfeiting would definitely spike during this first few months mm. that CBN continues to roll out these new notes into the financial sector into um, circulation but people again have to be very cautious yeah. I remember the the last time the Central Bank of Nigeria rolled out the 1000 naira note there were so many posters so many billboards indicating the various security features mm -hmm and how you can easily um, spot and identify a counterfeit note. Right. But also, Even one, of the, banks, we had one, banks this one, oh, yeah, one of the, I think, key issues that I think, or pointers that Nigerians need to remember is the, the paper itself. Because the, the notes is usually about the quality of the paper, right? So you fold it, you fold it into like a, a ball, you squeeze it tight, you drop it if it doesn't you know fall back up it's very clear that the, the paper that is being used for that money is not of the uh, CBN standard or quality so it is likely definitely surely a, a, a fake note especially if it's brand new right um, because we do know that 
the wear and tear over the years you know some old notes if you squeeze them they're not gonna yeah, you know fall gonna back up yeah. but definitely if it's a new note new redesigned note and this is just from you know the experiences we've had over the years mm -hmm. i'm very sure cbn is going to do a lot more education and creating a lot of awareness because right now we're we're dealing with shortages itself yeah. a lot of people are still saying that uh, yes. banks do not have enough yeah. of the new notes in their vaults so they can't uh, put them out there but we still have time we still have until okay. january okay. next year so just be very very cautious and ask relevant questions mm. about this new note, especially if you're in out. business don't go all especially out if you're in business yes. and if you're very suspicious about it please don't uh don't um Come you know hesitate yeah. don't hesitate to ask the right questions mm -hmm. and and also maybe consult someone who knows a thing or two about uh, identifying some of these security features because there are so many people that would uh, take advantage of this sure. situation sure. to inject a lot of counterfeit notes and people's businesses will be affected imagine mm -hmm. if someone comes to you and buys something worth a million naira yeah. in counterfeit notes oh. i mean your business is likely going to go under sure. depending on how you're able to uh, manage that kind of loss sure. so please be very very careful and and also i see a lot of people reluctantly um, refusing to collect the new notes I have seen a um, lot of videos on social media yeah, and exactly. uh, how people are reacting just, to the narrow notes just, just, just be cautious about um, how, how you apply that I mean if someone buys something and is trying to give you a 200 narrow note I mean yes you could try and see it you know all of these security features squeeze the note as we say but understand if a, a, someone who is trying to spread counterfeit note trust me he's gonna to want to give you more than 200 now no. or 500 now no. or 1000 now no. because he's he's trying to you know get a okay. lot of value from that fake money because he doesn't want to keep the fake money for a very long time so let's be cautious but then again know that this has come to stay in a short time we'll accept all get it. used to it mm -hmm. and uh it will be a thing of the past just as we accepted the, the 20 naira that year 15 naira mm. that came and yeah the polymer notes the polymer but they, they were came. they were not easily counterfeited because no, of the polymer yeah, yeah. and i, I like yeah. that uh, yeah. if also maybe given either mm. i'll prefer that but you know more yeah, better I mean, quality because Listen, you know in terms of longevity i don't no, no, think no. It because that's, that, that was one of the reasons why they went for yeah. the polymer but the print on the note was not long lasting yeah. at all it it wore faded, off yeah. you saw the fading away of the print and everything yeah. and you know it just looks really hideous Sometimes and it's just when these when you go guys down the give you a change ah. we, we try to reason ah. and be like which of the because it's 20 naira when it's faded it looks mm. like 15 naira it does yeah. and 10 naira and 5 naira they almost look the same, same. So the reddishness goes mm -hmm. away and it just looks horrible <laughs> but anyway um, we're also hearing that um, POS operators across the country are still drumming their warning sounds to the CBN about this new uh, cash withdrawal limit and the policy that CBN is basically trying to in in enforce and I have my reservations about that while you're in business to make money for yourself and i don't think the cbn said uh, through a representative last week that uh, they will not be uh, affected and i think that they will not largely be affected yes they might see uh, a decline a little bit in cash withdrawals but all in all brenda if you're a pure operator you mostly op your profit comes from the transactions that you make whether people withdraw or people make transfers or people deposit, right? You charge your 100 naira fee, 1550 naira fee, 200, 500, 3000, or 8000, depending on the amount. That, and I think people are still going to conduct such transactions. Yes, people will be limited with regards to cash withdrawals, but I think the CBN has designed it in such a way that we have to look at the big picture, not this micro. Uh, concern that a lot of people are because if you if you look at the entire Nigerian economy, what constitute peers, uh, what constitute the interest of peers operators to the grand scheme of things? It's very very minimal. Uh, I was the and of the in, the needs of the many Brenda outweighs the needs of the few, and that is the big picture that we have to it, see. It takes, excuse me, it takes me to this very conversation I I heard from the one of the passengers while we were going home on Friday. The guy outright he was like, this is not going to surprise. Nigerians will not attend to this. Nigerians will not accept the new notes. I was like, I looked at Why? him carefully. 
I I wanted to say a thing, but I was like, there's no point because he's made up his mind at that mm. point in time. So anything you're going to tell him will not go that well. Is it that you argue about it? Or in fact, you you both get annoyed and mm. everyone keeps. So I, I I just know that in my head I was like, this is one person mm. that I know yeah. his mindset about the new era notes is uh, he has tied it somewhere. People just have opinions about yes. everything, Brenda, and sometimes it, it doesn't really help. Not at all. You know, uh, you just have an opinion about everything mm -hmm. and you don't have the requisite information to make an informed opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, one of the things I, I, that really turns me off from engaging so many people, yeah, whether it's on really social cool. media or in real life conversations, because you realize they, that they're not equipped enough with adequate information, to with relevant uh, understanding. Mm. To be able to comprehend what is going on, the pros and cons, they, they're mostly just talking out of ignorance and um, there's no point in engaging someone like that, especially they, if they're not, not even interested. Yeah. They're not even interested in yeah. getting to know the real facts. They're very single-minded yeah. about what they know and what they, and what they, they, what they care to share. Yeah. Okay, All moving right. on to our lineup for today. Mm -hmm. Today uh, being the 19th day of December year 2022, let's quickly take a look at a historic event that happened on this day back in 1984. Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong Treaty was signed on this day back in 1984, um, formerly known as the Joint Declaration of the Government of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and the Government of the People's Republic of China on the question of Hong Kong, the Sino-British Treaty was signed by Zhao Zhao Ziyang of China and Margaret Thatcher of the United Kingdom in Beijing. The treaty uh, decided the fate of Hong Kong as a territory of China from July 1997. Hmm. And guess what? From that day, China okay. was counting down to the day they will take back Hong Kong. And that happened in 1997. Seven. And today, Hong Kong is still a bit separated from mainland China, mm -hmm. but is still under the uh, Chinese government's um, administration. And yeah, we've seen so many pro-democracy uh, protests and agitations in Hong Kong, but um, none of it has really made any mark yet internationally, as every other international power recognizes Hong Kong is under China. So, yeah. Okay, speaking on it, on another historic event that happened on this day, election of the first female president of South Korea. Mm. Park Jun Hye, who was the 11th president of South Korea and also holds the distinction mm. of being the first female head of state in Northeast Asia. Uh, Asia. Mm. She assumed office in February 2013. Yeah. Oh. And guess what? There was a boat mishap, and uh, I think it was three years ago, was it? two or three years ago, I think three years ago, and she stepped down mm. because of a boat mishap that killed a lot of students and in we South like, Korea. And wow. listen, wow. South Korea, you talk about their discipline, you talk about their culture and their tradition, um, very big economy, obviously, and yeah, let's just say that um, they are more friendly than their northern neighbors yes. um, under Mr. Kim Jong-un. But yeah, Park Boon hye was a phenomenal character internationally. Uh, no. All right, let's take a look at our to-do list on Safia Bekushu this morning. As we come down through Christmas uh, fever pitch celebration that is awaiting uh, this weekend, we're going to take a look at uh, security around the festive period and what Najun should be on the lookout for and perhaps how they can factor in their responsibility as citizens to be accountable for what is happening around their, uh, their vicinity as we keep tabs on security developments uh, in the country. All right, a lot of opinions are uh, still surrounding the uh, new CBN uh, monetary policy, mm. it, which is a hot topic that uh, a lot of persons are also throwing in their ideas. So on our schedule this morning, we'll, we are going to bring in someone who will be uh, giving us a better clarity, one who has worked in the banking sector before and understands uh, some of these policies as uh, mm. the CBN has ruled mm. out. Yeah, and of course, uh, we have your usuals like punchline on our to-do list for today. We'll take a look at our comment section on Facebook to give you feedback on some of the thoughts and opinions shared by some of our followers on social media. For now, we'll take a quick break. When we do come back, we'll take a look at the front pages 
of some select national dealers this morning to give you a sense of the stories making the headlines from across the country. Join us again. Are you thinking security and safety? Von Freddy Global Security Africa is an efficient, professional and reliable security outfit. We offer our clients the design and evaluation of fiscal security system, managing guard force, industrial corporate security services, hostage negotiation, executive VIP and celebrity protection, campus security and safety structure, anti-kidnapping strategies, escort management, private criminal investigation and training, plus general security consultancy at von frederick global security africa we pride ourselves on honesty discretion integrity providing the platform to mitigate crime violence and terrorism our offices are active bello Ahmed plaza beside federal medical center lamido zuberu bypass yola south adamoa state think security and safety think von frederick global security africa Security, it is not just my business, it is also yours. Are you thinking security and safety? Von Freddy Global Security Africa is an... Welcome back if you're just joining your Safari Refresh Show. Now to what we have on punchline, Abdul. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Christmas celebration that is just around the corner. By the way, we're, we're what we said yeah, earlier. yeah, <laughs> we're just going <laughs> to uh, tweak the lineup a little bit. Mm. Uh, but we're also going to talk about being security conscious yeah. uh, because that is one of those uh, topics that will come up uh, now and they will come up later. Sorry. Uh, when we usher in the new year and listen while on Christmas Day or during the Christmas celebrations most people want to let their guards down to enjoy everything and to you know just be positive and all of that we have to understand where we are coming from and where we currently are as a country there are a lot of people who are still determined right to turn such a very good atmosphere into a very bad atmosphere so it means that there are so many criminals out there whether they are terrorists, whether they are bandits, whether they are militants, whether they are Sheila boys that are trying to dampen the mood by committing so many atrocities and criminal activities. So, it goes, it goes back to the same issue that we've always talked about, especially since the emergence of the Boko Haram insurgency uh, here in the country. And that is, security is everyone's business. business. So whether you're celebrating, whether you are not celebrating, remain cautious of your environment stay vigilant report anything that is suspicious to the relevant authorities whether it is within your immediate community mm. raise an alarm we've seen so many kidnappings over the past couple of weeks and yes let's just say that Nigeria still have reservations about whether this is going to be a peaceful experience altogether so that is why we have to really uh, rise up to the challenge and, and contribute our own quota. And again, I, I think people should uh, not pick into little fights. Yes, because uh, th that's a trick. Sometimes it's a trick where you see this uh, bad guys throw it into the communities. The, the sun, uh, the, their goons on uh, specific reactions. And that will spark a community mm. fight too. People should not lose guard stay on your lane understand the environment very well try to be watchful try to be keen about where you are and 
don't stay late night outside because I think that is not important. Your safety is the. Important. I think we still have the. Uh, um, is it eleven o'clock coffee still yeah. in place? It's, it's still in yeah. place. Yeah. Uh, do not do not forget that that coffee is still in place, um, and the police will be right mm -hmm. to perhaps detain you or confront you if mm -hmm. you decide to celebrate late into the night because it is really not safe uh, for a lot of people to keep uh, moving about at hours. Be that conscious. are very, very odd. Be conscious about mm -hmm. yourself. Be yeah. conscious about your, In fact, be deliberately conscious. And be very, very careful when yes. taking your kids to the park mm -hmm. uh, to celebrate Christmas. Because like I did say, it might not be Boko Haram or any insurgent. It could be the Sheila boys or just some petty robber uh, or, or, that is, or pickpocket that yeah. is trying to uh, undermine uh, the mood. Because trust me, you go to a park and you're trying to celebrate and someone steals your phone, uh, you're not going to have a Merry Christmas. Because that's all you'll be talking about. And mothers and also should be watchful on their kids. Yeah, yes, yeah. Because uh, they're, they're, they're very, very vigilant. The, the, the news about don't get carried away. Yeah, don't get carried away yeah. when you're out with your kids, yeah. three, four, or five of them. Yeah. Maybe some of your nephews or nieces are around to celebrate and decide, okay, let's go to the park. Always keep an, keep eye, an eye on, on them, them and make sure that you set a time limit yeah. uh, for when you it, want to be out so that you can. You and it makes sense if, you, you, if you do the family thing mm. and you don't allow them all out by themselves mm. because uh, yeah. they will get missing in between. Maybe they follow their mm. friends out and you wouldn't, you wouldn't please, even know. You're going out to celebrate Christmas with uh, a friend. Home. Tell people at home, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to see with. Brenda or yeah. we're going to this place or we're going to that place so that we know uh, as as friends and family, where to locate you if you've that's you've not stand, responded that's to. That's standard in my house yeah. till tomorrow. When Let, you're going out, don't tell your family. In mm, fact, like my dad, mm, if you're going out, you mm, have to be specific. Yeah. All right, okay, I'm going to high in Gada, yeah. and from there I'll go to uh, Yola yeah. Town. Like he knows your movement, so and, that if, and, if and anything happens, mm. you'll be able to call. I don't follow this. And rules. they know where There's to check. Exactly. And they know where to check. And they know sure. who to ask. Mm -hmm. Also, and that is very very important. Very if you're going to be out, that's security on itself. You're going to be out for two hours. I'll be no. I should normally be concerned when you when you stay three hours and you don't call or you don't check in. So please check in on your friends, check in on your loved ones. When they say they're going out for two hours and they stay four hours without calling back, don't assume everything is okay until you call and then they say, "Oh, I'm okay. I just yeah. decided to extend my it's stay." It's not time for you to be yeah. too private about yeah, your, exactly. your 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 um, so, time for you yeah. for that. This is these are the times that we're living in. Yeah. We cannot afford to be carefree. Yeah. Not now, not, not ever. Now. Okay, and it goes without saying that it is worthy of us to be very, very conscious of the fact that we want to live a, a very meaningful life even after the celebration. So do not take unnecessary risk during these uh, festival or during these festive periods. Whether it's Christmas, whether it's Boxing Day, whether it's New Year, stay vigilant, stay cautious, and remember that security is as much as your business as it is mine as it is. Uh, the government so we all have a stake in this so celebrate responsibly and remain vigilant throughout this period okay this is uh, what we have for punchline this morning we'll go on a break and uh, we'll be back live on Safia Repression
Hey, welcome back if you're just joining your Safa Breakfast Show. Now to what we have coming up next is the review of some selected national dailies. And I have my reviewer here in the studio with me. We have Austin Ajayi. Good to have you on the show this morning. Thank you very much. So we we will uh, look at our uh, four national dailies so that or Safia this morning, The Nation, The Daily Trust, Punch Newspaper, and The Nigerian Tribune. Quickly to what The Nation have, we go very top uh, to look at the stories. 25 uh, generals among 756 retired senior uh, military officers. 25 generals. And to other stories, more pressure on uh, Obaseki, Okoa, over 13% derivation fund. This is the news. And what do you have to say about this? Yeah, this 30% derivation that um, we carry blue hot and uh, so all the oil producing uh, states definitely we we want to, people want to know what has been happening. So I'm not surprised Obaseki and Okoa and the, and the likes in the Niger Delta are uh, already facing the heat. They just give a, they just all they need to do give account of this 13% they've been collecting over the years. Uh, we just hope things uh, unfold better and also uh, we hope they were able to utilize the 13% for the communities in which are, are involved in this. To other stories, DSS withdraws personnel from Ocean Governor Adeleke. You want to know reason why? Yeah, Adeleke is becoming, um, it's starting faster than one would have uh, expected. He's doing some things that, that are inimical to the growth of democracy. Is just governance is continuous. You're mm -hmm. just coming in, changing things, doing tribunal law. There are some there are some issues that went through the, the, the process, that went through the legislation, that went through this, just coming up, uh, taking them off one another. So I think his action seems though something. Yeah, really it came with uh, with 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 a mindset mm -hmm. to do certain things, and which is not forgetting that we are governed by law. Mm -hmm. We are governed by the people who who make this law. So you can't just single-handedly because the governor okay just uh, below the name plate let's speak to the big story this one says a triple dumb smacking day for Adelike by passes the g5 and uh, this uh, seemed to be a concern to so many people uh, is um, well I know the these are political calculations you know you have to do your, your calculations where it suits you you know so I'm not surprised if they are doing some aligning or realigning so it's part of politics all right, and the big news, <coughs> Macy is uh, on this one making uh, the, hot, the, the, the headlines on, on uh, selected national dailies, Argentina uh, moving to the top of the World Cup. And this is what uh, football gives back to the society. Uh, I, I, I just love everything. Uh, no, let me, I will definitely <laughs> say, you know, last time Argentina won was in the ATCs. Uh, Messi was just a toddler, about a year old at that time. He has seen it all. He played. This is the best. This is he's rounding up his career, and uh, it's good for him. It's good for his country. Mm. Where he would have thought uh, the the East African country would have won it. It was a, it was one of the epic finals yeah. in recent time. I've not I've not I've not I've not witnessed any final that was this exciting, this mm. good. I, I give it to the Qatarians. They did so well, and um, Mbappe. Is a revelation. He's just mm -hmm. 24. Mm -hmm. At 20, he won the World Cup. At 24, be, the final became the 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 best player. Mm -hmm. The first player to have scored an hat trick in the World Cup finals. So the final that is records were broken, records were made for Lionel Messi and Messi. This is just the best way to mm -hmm. cap his lustrous career. Okay, let's speak to this uh, very concern here. Hoodlum said uh, Emo Magistrate Court on fire. Uh, I don't understand <coughs> this uh, uh, whole perhaps, outcome. Perhaps if there is no magistrate, if there is no court to, to deal with them, they will not be dealt with. But that is, they are making a mistake. A big mistake. A big mistake. You don't need to start burning facilities. They have, they've left burning high neck facilities. They're mm -hmm. not going to judiciary. Mm. What do they intend to achieve? If you are a criminal, if you the long hand of the law will catch up with you. When it catches up with you, it will deal with you. So there's they are no doing point. this. There's no point doing all this. All right, that is what the nation have for you in cup. Let's uh, quickly do a review of the uh, daily trust. Our uh, daily trust. This one says uh, potential flashpoints to watch ahead of 2023 general elections. And the writer says Southeast Lagos, Kaduna, Plateau, Kano, Bruno on red list 
hate speech, fake news identified as triggers. I hope Yoruba uh, secessionist plot to stop polls, according to IGP. We have actions government must take before polls. We've talked about this severally. Yeah, We've several. identified the flashpoint, the triggers, and also concerns <coughs> regarding 2020. It said good that yeah. INEC said nothing would make them postpone the election. Mm. President Buhari has said, I've given you all you need, all the logistics you need to carry out your election. And it's also good that these flashpoints are identified. Mm. You take proactive actions, proactive measures to ensure that this, these places are condoled and where uh, fortified, security-wise. So I think um, this crisis that are coming out is also making the federal government to really sit up the police and all other security agencies to ensure that this flashpoint that has been mentioned is well protected for electorates to go out and do their, cast their votes. Mm. All right, to other stories, NAV rescues seven Chinese six months after adoption in Niger State. And uh, how post consection saved Nigeria over 1.1 trillion naira in 16 years, according to operators. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's good, good news. news. Yeah. And gunmen burn, Imo, uh, gunmen burn Imo Magistrate Court. This I took a lot. To that well, structure you see there is in Gombe State. That particular uh, stu uh, structure is the ultra modern Sangaya Integrated School, uh, established by the governor okay. in Gombe. Good news to them. Yeah, no, that is uh, the, the educational uh, policy and the awareness is beginning to come. Uh, it's a good one, at least a mm. lot of people will benefit, not only for the poor, but yeah. Gombe, not only of an artist, the entire Nigerians who are willing to go to that school, we, mm. it is a good one. Yeah, stressing, and the Sultan. Uh, is the one commissioning this uh, big project. Congratulations to the people of Gombe State. And that is what the Daily Trust also uh, had on its uh, front page. Quickly to what the punch have coming up next. Let's review the punch newspaper, looking at the stories from the very top. This one says that uh, cash limit, POS operators give CBN ultimatum. Yes, this cash limit is actually is giving, giving me some kind of concern. So I don't see the cash withdrawal limit of 20,000 really realistic. Honestly, let, let us call the spade a spade. A bag of fries is sold for about 40, to 40, over 40, 45,000. 45, mm -hmm. Now, you've not, you've not buy other condiments. Now, you said I can only take 20,000. How do I make up with other? Do I need to go and buy things later today, tomorrow, when I know very well that if you buy something today in the next few hours it's, it's going up head. so what are we talking about are we saying that and uh, this thing no i think uh, cbn should actually have a rethink in this policy all right so this uh, concerns raised by world bank that says 80 million nigerians risk job loss 2013 is a concern raised by the world bank and other story says oil carnage raise of oh, oil earnings rather uh, rise by 308 billionaire. All right, big story says Dangote seven of 170 firms may have lost 2.4 trillion naira tax waivers. Rider right that says 47 new applications await governor's nod as finance bill undergoes national assembly approval. Federal government eyes over two trillion naira company tax revenue. And government warned against tax incentive removal. You know, the, the tax is what keeps the government going. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, those tax, uh, those do, doing the policy, they are, they, are, they are really trying to see how best Nigeria can uh, benefit from this, uh, mm. uh, uh, this issue, tax so? issues. Yeah. Uh, it is a concern that a lot of uh, persons it is, it is a concern. are really it putting is a concern. eye on. And uh, you know, the finance bill also has uh, really. Yeah. It's coming up. Uh, now, so. of the, hold up. All right, so this one on you seems rise by 177% uh, percent to 105 million. This is a concern on you seems. On you seems? Yes. Yes, the truth is. Uh, and you find that when you want to go and get your um, new SIM, somebody has registered it and not another. Is that I don't know what uh, Nigerian. Um, uh, com the Constitution's Commission is actually doing. The you see it is so much, it's so much in the, uh, uh, that is unused one so much in the country. Mm. Probably they should just mob them and destroy them. All right, lastly to this very one is a concern that Nigeria has to put, uh, put eyes on Lagos couple laments, 594 million lost to investment scam. 
What? You shine your eyes, that's what we yeah, say. Yeah, shine your eye. Don't just engage in anything <laughs> no, no, you see no, on no, social no. media. They are hackers. No, they are hackers. Yes, hackers will throw you ideas and, and they give you they give you something you that you money, know is not realistic. Syndrome. The quick money no, syndrome the, is a problem. Just in fact, the quick money syndrome. Shine your eyes. Don't just jump into investment. You give me ten. I uh, give you ten thousand naira in a, in a fortnight. I'll get twenty thousand naira. And what, what 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 business are they doing? All right. I think MMM should still be fresh in people's mind. If you have to really uh, think twice, yeah. MMM should be very so very many of fresh those wonder banks. In the yes, past. there are a whole lot. All right, that is what the punch uh, had for us this morning on its front page. Quickly to our last paper, which is the Nigerian Tribune. The Nigerian Tribune has our stories uh, captioned in this manner: Banking uh, public to pay more tax on increased use of e-payments. And, and as expert calls for review of stamp duty provisions, <laughs> there's a whole lot when it comes to. This, you see, this banking. Uh, there was a, there was there was a research um, carried out. Banks makes over nine trillion uh, from Nigeria, yes. which is about um, uh, more than the year's budget of mm -hmm. Nigeria. So you see, they are making money, making Nigeria. The now twenty they want naira, the five, the five naira, naira the everything. five they kobo, put together, the forty-three kobo, and a whole lot. Whole lot put together, they are making more money, making Nigerians. And you see, that is why you see some of them come with so many flamboyant tissues. Whereas. The Nigerian worker is actually suffering. Yeah. Now you make over nine trillion naira, uh, over nine trillion naira. This is as, as what was heard. Bank charges mm. from Nigerians far above Nigerians' budget. I think the banking policies they also they should be reviewed. Yeah. They, 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 if they give you loan, they want to take it. In, by, uh, they give you by the right hand, taking it by with their left hand. So please, I I think a lot should be done. I, we need to really cry out that their charges are too much. And even if they are taking this, let them invest it back into the Nigerian system. Let them invest it back into the economy. Let them build schools for Nigerian children, the, for the less privileged children. This is what they can do, and not just buy flashy cars for themselves. And a lot of them are living in uh, this in, in a mansion and going on holidays in uh, in uh, Europe and other Caribbean countries because they are, they are just taking Nigerians' money. All right, let's speak to this concern uh, raised by us. So eight months salary with health, uh, okay, eight months with health salaries. ASU may consider legal action against the federal government. Is a thing of concern. Yeah, I like, think if they, yes, I think as it is, ASU has decided that no more down to, no more going to go and strike because the, the it's it's affected everybody as children, the parents, the even the country. So it is good if they go to court. Let the court compare. And okay. this uh, one is the also one question is who is the court? Is it not the federal government? The government is the court. <laughs> no, they are the own <laughs> the court. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Just beside that story, we have this one coming on board. It says, uh, uh, Senate panel sum, uh, summons IPPIS officials over missing 113 millionaire service wide votes. <laughs> I think let them continue to do inquiries. I'm sure they will get to the end of it. All right, below the nameplate, the big story speaks to this one campaign finances. How we will checkmate political parties. This is coming from INEC. You find that story on page three of the Nigerian Tribune. Kidnappers kill businessman after ransom payment in Ondo. Very unfortunate situation. Yes, the big story, uh, the uh, picture gallery there is the uh, the celebration of well, the uh, Argentina's uh, big week. Yes, after that six years. Interesting. All right. Other story says NDLA intercepts 1.7 million narcotic pills and seizes 5,460 kg of corn in six states. You see, uh, huh. NDLA has been very, very proactive. They've been on this matter. They, they, and it's they, building they, results. It's all about leadership mm -hmm. and they do, uh, bringing a lot of results. I'm sure by the end of the year, if they collate what they have seized and they've mopped up from the market, which would have been adverts, to the Nigerian youth, you begin to give them kudos. All right, and uh, Kogi Akpagoba tackles EFCC over 20 billion uh, uh, bailouts. This has been in the news, and uh, this uh, is a so story. Let's begin to see how they, they should account for the bailouts. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you, if you are giving uh, money in trust for people, you should be able to account for it. 
So we're going to do this one that's equal to APC, lift veil on your standard bearer's identity and uh, the writer says character assassinations won't help you. Okay, so it's my, it's my appeal to politicians to campaign on issue base, not on okay. individuals. Yeah. So they should do that and make things go. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you have on the cards. Tell us how you're going to actualize it. Tell us what you will do. Tell us what you will do to change the narrative. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you're going to tackle the challenges we are facing. And where do you intend to put us at the end of your tenure? These are things they should be talking. Tell us what you will do. Don't look at what the other man is saying. You don't have concern. With you don't it. have it's concern. a competition you're it's going for. It's, it's, it's You're going for the win. Your eyes should be on the ball. Oh, on the ball. Yes. Who breaks the tape first? Mm -hmm. You? The opponent, don't think about, don't do campaign of don't even, If I don't think he exists, of course, that's, that's how I look at it. That's it. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I am in this contest, or every other person that's contesting, I, I am the one to beat. I don't even know him. That's how it should that's be. That's how it should be. Uh, Austin Ajayi, uh, I didn't get to ask you about your pre preparation for Christmas because uh, we needed to uh, round this off. Any good news for you? Yeah, we'll, 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 by Monday, we should be in the busing day. Uh, Christmas is all over. It's one of those days. It's just it's a special another day. It's, it's just another day. It's a special day, please. Yeah, it's a special day for, for the kids, for the parents, for together us. your children. Yeah. But it's us. just it's just another day. It's one of those good days. Okay. For us to well, eat more right. Today is a good day. <laughs> no, it's, no, that it's, one is all, special. it's always a good day. It's special. So it is just Don't doubt it. Day. It's special. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so the, the newspapers had beautiful headlines and were able to do justice. So that's it's the, the situation of buy one yeah, and read all. Exactly. All right. This is uh, where we draw the account on the review this morning. Ah, uh, much later on the show we'll bring you back what we have in the comment section on our social connect platform join us again Calm down. Oh, yeah, make bring that to the phone. Dial star 894 star 1 ash to open your first money wallet. This money, if you like rock cash, you fit with drum, pay bills, or even transfer himself. I don't pay all of it now. I beg you, five goza for first money wallet. Enjoy the unlimited life with first money wallet. Dial star 894 star 1 hash on any mobile phone to activate now. You first. First Bank. Every day, we are exposed to a variety of information from the larger society and on social media. How credible are such messages? Nobody loves to be deceived. Nobody wants to be fooled. Stop the creation and spread of fake news. Don't be in a hurry to share messages. Verify facts and source before spreading. Fake news is harmful. discussions on Safi Breakfast Show, follow us on Facebook, visit www.facebook.com forward slash Safia on TV Gota. Welcome back to Safia Breakfast Show live on TV Gota from our studio here in Bajabure Hills. A quick reminder, you can watch the show on the go on our streams on Facebook and on YouTube. Check it out on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Live. On Facebook, 
It's uh, facebook.com for Safi on TV Gotel, and this is where uh, the conversation is taking place. Speaking of the conversation, let's quickly take a look at our, our comment section. But before then, here's the topic the independent. National uh, Electoral Commission, INEC, has warned politicians and their supporters against bullying and hate speeches during the electioneering period while they campaign for their various uh, parties and candidates. And we asked you to weigh in on the conversation. Abubakar Yaya says, hate speech is completely unacceptable. A real politician will not use hate speech as a weapon the electorate now are wiser are wise enough to know who is to be voted we are tired of cheating and deceit i wouldn't say we uh, well there's a considerable uh, number of people who are wiser now but we need a lot more uh political education abraham michael says that's very commendable a uh, very, cool, very commendable call from the Independent National Electoral Commission and it will help the campaign process uh, become very transparent, transparent and also help the electorate to dictate the right candidate and unfaithful candidate. Okay. Not sure what you're trying to say there, but uh, Abraham, thank you for joining the conversation. Josie Joseph, or Joyfi Joseph Joshua says, um, Hate speeches and bullying are the basics of Nigerian politics. On a formal setting, is going to be frowned against, no doubt. But how much do the public uh, know about punishments and fines in respect uh, to the crime? Good morning. Well, thank you for sharing that thoughts. I would say that it's in a human, it's a human nature to be tribal or to be. Um, you know, disparaging in such a very political atmosphere. I wouldn't say it's an exclusively Nigerian thing. Wisdom, Matthias Wisdom says, Elections should be issue-based and not only, uh, not any other way. Bullying, calling names and hate speeches has no place in a democratic process. We should rally around INEC and support them. Elections should be uh, issue-based. Uh, okay, he's just repeating himself now. But, um, yeah, I do agree that INEC needs the support that they can get. Let's get to Nuyong Zonovore's comment. He says, it's a good call at the right time because politics is all about good manifestos and that will bring uh, development and progress in the society or that will bring development and progress in the society. Hakim Abba joins the conversation and he says, uh, elections should be issue-based and not any other way. Bullying, name-calling. Okay. <laughs> now I see what Yetunde is saying about um, certain people copying some, some people's <laughs> comments. Feels like we've read this before already uh, on uh, Wisdom Matthias's uh, comment. But I'll put a bet on it that Hakim Abba said it first. I don't know why, but I have a feeling that he said it first. Uh, moving on, Marcus Juliet says, I think it's a good idea to help prevent unnecessary violation of human rights. And Abdul Mumin Aliu says, the move by Anik is a right step in the right direction. All right, let's call it a day there. And um, we appreciate you for joining the conversation and sharing your thoughts your views and opinions uh, with us please stay in touch we'll try as much as we can to uh, get your message across but of course you have to articulate your thoughts in the most uh, sensible way and keep it concise as much as possible you can always find us on facebook by visiting www.facebook.com for slash safia on tv go to like the page and feel free to make good use of the comment section of course keep your remarks responsible at all times. We'll be back in a moment with our first conversation on Safia Breakfast Show. Join us again. For more on all discussions on Safia Breakfast Show, 
follow us on Facebook. Visit www.facebook.com forward slash Safia on TV Gota. Every day, we are exposed to a variety of information from the larger society and on social media. How credible are such messages? Nobody loves to be deceived. Nobody wants to be fooled. Stop the creation and spread of fake news. Don't be in a hurry to share messages. Verify facts and source before spreading. Fake news is harmful. This is Ikolo Community. And this is Otana Community. As election time nears, politicians arrive with money. Members of Ikolo community sell their vote, but Otana community refuses to be settled. They vote for the candidates of their choice. I do solemnly swear that everything... After election, the Ikolo school needs repairs, but the politician has already settled them. <laughs> Otana hospital needs repairs too. Otana community demands action and gets results. Your vote is powerful. It builds the future. Don't be settled. No, see, don't look. No, see, don't look. Make no, no, see, don't look. Oh, look oh. Welcome back on Safia Refresh. We're going to our very conversation. We have the United States, it comes to a lot of partying and visits to families and friends. Many, in the light of the celebration, keep late and visit places without keeping track of time. In this unsafe world of kidnappings and other security vices, how and what should people put in place for safety uh, measures? And is a concern where we come into a, uh, festive activities, right? And you see people really going all out because of the festivity and also trying to put effort in making sure that every moment uh, counts in their various life. But again, looking at all of this, you need security, safety. You need to be safe in. Uh, you need to be safe from places you go to, from visit you make, and also try to keep records of activities around you. To speak to this very concern we have in the studio. Dr. Uh, Saeed Owo Nikoko. He is from the Center for Peace and Security uh, here in Adama State. Welcome on the show this morning. Good morning. So good Hi. to see you. Good morning. Of the season. Same it's to you. been a while. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's been a while, really. Yes, the Vatican is over now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, even if uh, when we were on strike, you know, yeah. we, we were still doing our community service work, right, right, uh, right. you know, so. It's good to see you again. Mm. All right, speaking to uh, the festivity and uh, how people will really go all out, uh, not being 
careful per se, like both, that not being security conscious, mm. and uh, how also you see people uh, talk about security just the way they converse with their friends and that, but the, 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 the usual consciousness sometimes for me is missing. Yeah. And how do you really put this for persons that are coming back home for the festivity? And the kind of news they hear back here, how things are happening, the security issues are happening. Help us uh, really talk to this uh, very concerns. All right, thank you. Uh, I re really want to thank you, people, for uh, making this a point of discussion. Uh, for me, I think that uh, the discourse around this is very good, considering the fact that security situation in Nigeria has. Uh, has not really been encouraging over time and uh, based on our experience the period of yellow tide you know uh, that we find ourselves in now uh, is a, usually a period of you know uh, you know complication of security issues and all that you know uh, so uh, I, I would just want to say that yes a uh, kidnapping is just one of the many security you know crisis we have now uh, and you are very correct uh, I have a feeling that uh, period normally period of yellow tide like this is normally a period where you find increase in criminality and sometimes uh, one of the ways by which criminals especially kidnappers research has shown that one of the ways they get their information sometimes is how we frivolously uh, share information in public sometimes you discuss uh, figures you know of money in public and then it catches the attention of people and then before you know it uh, somebody is already on your trail you know so it, this should be a period where we should minimize you know discussion of money in public such as on phone where you know you'll be talking you won't you wouldn't know somebody who is going to pick that kind of information you know on on uh, on, on the social media or even on social media sometimes you see uh, the way people share information on social media you wouldn't even you know be able to understand that even sometimes the meal that people you know uh, eat in their houses they come to share it on social media and sometimes some of these you know uh, show your vulnerability you know so in this period of unitide i think that this is something that we need to you, you know we need to you know uh, actually reduce you know you you don't have to show everything that you have or something that you are doing or you know some people they are so they are so worst that sometimes some things that they are doing currently they will go and share it on sometimes it shows it, it, it just shows your vulnerability do you, think, doctor, do you think doctor it takes away right traditionally speaking that people have to be that conscious that sensitive about everything about their safety, do you think it takes away from truly experiencing uh, the Yuletide period, the, the Christmas uh, festivity in the true sense? Because you're being too cautious about uh, maybe sending the wrong signal to someone who could now target you um, for, for, for one attack or the other. Yeah, um, in a way, sharing your you know where about or whatever you are doing on social media uh it is not the only way by which you can enjoy yourself so it doesn't take anything away I mean, it has become a part of our yeah it, it has been that, that's what i'm saying now and you are likely you are likely to find it even increase in this yearly type because you know this period is usually a period of celebration yeah. and so when people celebrate uh, i mean celebrate they want to catch up with the flow mm -hmm. on social media and all that but somebody is going to know that take for instance i i am into security studies and i've you know uh, i've gotten people share experience of how people get to know that at a particular time they are not around they are somewhere and so their houses can be attacked you understand that's why i always tell people that even if you have to share 
you know your information or you know that you attended a particular place you know uh, it, it should not be at that particular time you know you can share it days or you know after it, it does not have to be something that is live mm -hmm. but some people will just show you and say live i'm you know i'm in this place i'm doing this now you you don't you don't have to do that how much of this should uh, really reduce uh, it should be reduced because a lot of people uh, seem to to pay no attention to all of this conversation. You see how the social media, to some large extent, also has uh, placed a lot of persons on uh, red line. And secondly, as you did talk about conversation on phone, it's it's practical that uh, friends now fight friends mm. and even the cycle in which you have some certain conversations with you're, you're not certain who is going to do what at yeah that point. yeah so how much of uh, this should people really minimize and making sure that it helps also when, when we're talking about security yeah um generally i've always told people that uh you you need to define generally now you need to define your usage of social media uh yes i also have social media and do you know that that i you know apart from the fact that sometimes it wastes time you know it just like i said previously it may make you vulnerable it's one of the ways by which you know uh, you know criminals tap information and you know you know in, in this current dispensation in in this you know uh, world that we are if you are not on social media it appears to you as though you are not in the world because that is where the happening you know is taking place uh for for me like for some town square for everybody yeah yeah it, it's like a town hall you know where you meet a lot of people you know where you share ideas where you you know but we have to be you know conscious of the fact that it also you know uh has its own security risk you know that it you know poses to us you know if somebody is on your trail if somebody is watching over you and he, he wants to do something bad to you it's one of the avenues by which people can get more information about you and they get it freely and they get it freely i mean without even i mean the the only person the only thing that that person is probably going to expend is data mm -hmm. and then he has everything about you you know so i, I think that it exposes us to a, a lot of risk mm -hmm. and you know just like i said at this period you are likely going to see it intensified in terms of how people use it because it's a period of you know celebration you meet with people you go to places you know you want to show that yes you are in the mood of the period okay. you know so you you need you we, we need to be very careful but beyond even that there are even also many things that we need to be very careful about you know if if i'm permitted to go ahead with it yeah um this is also a period where you are likely going to see you know uh, you are likely going to see a uh, very high incidence of sexual assault on especially uh, the under i mean the under age you know because a a lot of research has shown that during the period of COVID-19, for instance, when children were not going to school, a lot of them were victims of sexual assault, especially rape. Now, again, this time around, you know, students are, I mean, uh, students are on break, pupils are also on break, they are not going to school. And this is also a period where you see that their parents will want to hope, you know, their task mm. their work to make sure they are, that they are able to live up to the expectation and demand of the period so you are likely going to see them going to work leaving the children at home so this is something that parents also need to be careful about mm. you know that this is a period uh, for but, uh, i mean it is a period when their children especially the female one you know are exposed or are vulnerable to sexual assault mm. and you know 
it is also very important that this has to be in their subconscious so that they'll begin to dev devise way by which that can be okay. curtailed. You, um, a couple of months ago, right, we heard of the advisory that was um, put out by the United States and the United Kingdom and then a host of other countries around uh, the federal capital territory, for instance, right? And uh, it talks about attacks on popular public um, places such as malls, for instance, yeah. churches, for instance, and things like that. And we, we are well aware that when it's Christmas or any other yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, national holiday or, or things like that, usually malls, um, parks, that's where people go to, yeah. right? What are some of your pointers about how people can conduct themselves safely during this period? And are you concerned about any threat uh, or of, of an attack around some of these um, areas? Not necessarily just here in Adama or in the Northeast, but generally speaking mm -hmm. across the country. Do you think that um, security needs to be heightened for people to feel safe? Um, while yes, you are you are very correct. I, I think that that advisory was given around either ending of uh, October or sometimes in November. You know, and I think that the advisory was given around, you know, Abuja to say that Abuja is uh, not safe for everybody to go to. I mean, it was not safe for everybody to go to. Yeah, uh, I, I have always told my students that when you look at criminal organization or insurgent group they are also very rational mm. sometimes when you give advisory to people about their activities they may not even carry out their activities mm. around that time just like you have said you know the period of you know this kind of period is always a period for them to act you know because number one people lose guard mm. Yeah, you know, everybody just want to do one thing or the other. You want to make more money, you know, yeah, during the period. You want to money. travel to your places, you, you know, so people lose guard. Then number two, you see, you know, a, 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 you know, coming together of people in some special areas, mm -hmm. like you have said, like motor park. Mm -hmm. And these are vulnerable areas, you know, for people to, 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 to be attacked, mm -hmm. you know. And then I also think that considering the fact that there has been intensification of security apparatuses in abuja you know uh, insurgent group or group planning such attack may now have to talk think about fringe areas you know what are those soft spots now yeah because I mean, you, you have to consider if you're talking about christmas yeah. it's happening on a sunday and we all know that obviously sunday service uh, is a part yeah. of yeah the lineup. Uh, and then probably you talk about um, beer parlors, for instance, restaurants, beer parlor, parks where, where children yeah, uh, go pa to parks, play, you know, play and, 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 and areas like that. And, and we, we know, based on scale, that we can't police everywhere in yeah. this country. Yeah. We can't have police officers. Even if we can, they're not always the, going the to The manpower is not there. The manpower is not yeah. there. So what do you recommend to people who want to celebrate but also need to be cautious about the way I, I, my, my advice to people is that whatever is not necessary mm. needs to be, you know, just for it, it needs to be forgone. Mm. You know, uh, take for instance, why should, why should you, for instance, I, I, I'm not saying it with the intention of demarketing some people. Mm. Uh, that is not what I'm saying because some people will feel, uh, I mean, yellow tide period is always a period for us to have people come. But my advice, looking at the security situation, is that number one, people need to be conscious. You know, take for instance, if you go to a place and you see some people around on some or some things even in places that are very suspicious mm -hmm. people need to put up you know they need to think you know they they, they, they don't need to lose guard you know mm -hmm. just like i say it's always a period, but they need to then another thing is also that what is not necessary at a particular time should just be left you know uh, should be forgone you know take for instance uh is it important that you have to travel when other people are traveling? I, I, don't, I don't think it's... If, if you need to travel, why not travel earlier? Or travel... I mean, there are, you need to look for a time that such areas are decongested. You know, because these groups 
you know function more on capturing areas where you have a lot of but what about other threats um doctor i mean i understand the likes of Boko Haram and bandits could be a thing uh, uh maybe even in the southeast we don't know how uh things will go down but we obviously expect that because it's christmas maybe uh, there will be some sort of ceasefire or a lowering of the temperature but there are other crimes and criminal activities that we worry about petty mm. theft for instance yeah, right yeah. and it's very common during this time of yeah day, yeah right yeah because people are very loose with their possessions they mm. get carried away with the excitement mm. and you have pickpockets around and about mm. um so what, what what other things should people be on the lookout for i mean if not some of the major things some of the small uh, details like yeah burglars uh, coming to yeah that, that's why i said that you know the advice that i give still counts in this case people need to think ahead you know you need to be conscious uh yes uh in the area where i lived uh i mean that i'm living i noticed that period of uh, festivity. you know festivity especially where you have to do night uh, you know i mean uh, what what is it called now? night watch overnight mm. yeah it's usually period when people go to bogu houses mm. because they know that a lot of people would have gone to church you know just to watch over you know you know so you you need people now need to think about i mean be conscious of that that if you leave your house and there is nobody at home it is an opportunity for uh you know criminals who want to boggle to take advantage of that uh most time why people don't ask is because uh, act is because we we forget so you know very soon and then we are overwhelmed by the thinking around the jubilation of the period but we have to be conscious of this uh, uh, no, sorry about that. Uh, speak to us about how there are there are conversations where you see people talk about how people are kidnapped. They will say no, the, the, this person is uh, identified already in a community, perhaps to 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 have been kidnapped. But again, they for, forget also that some of the, some of the other time they, they rotate. Maybe we'll put it now because you remember how it was in Giri. Uh, mm. before the whole thing you you mean they don't that. concentrate in a particular area no not that people don't the conversation on the table is that once you are kidnapped yes we were trailed and all other uh, activities was basically for you but when you look at how it, it happens recently it's not about particular individual they can come in a community like four or five times yeah and people are not paying attention to that that is my concern how do you disabuse the minds of people to pay attention that he came that they came to this particular uh, community once they might not come back again mm. yeah um i'm not sure that uh, there are a lot of factors that uh kidnappers uh look at before they think about number one they think about what is the possibility of succeeding if, if they see that you know a a particular victim that they are looking at they have high intensity of succeeding in the kidnapping that they also they they don't yes maybe environment may play a, a factor because if you have a, uh, an environment that is highly policed uh you know chance of succeeding may be very very low and that may deprive them from coming uh to that area but i think more that what they they basically concentrate on is how for i mean another factor is also what they are likely going to make out of it yeah. you know so uh, if they they for instance think about you know but we have also had a situation where they went for a particular person but having not succeeded in that case another prey you know was uh, you know so these, these are some of the yeah, things they're very opportunistic yeah so they look at the opportunity that is available and, and the, with the least least resistance yeah they don't yeah have to take yeah so, yeah so yeah finally if we can talk about the responsibility of the security agency we had the pleasure of uh speaking to the commissioner of police here in adam state and a lot of people uh have commended you know the performance of the Nigerian police force here in Adama State over the past couple of years. But if you are to give your expectations of 
the law enforcement agencies, whether it's the DSS, the military, or the Nigerian police. Because when it comes to policing in this country, when it comes to law and order, it is their uh, responsibility yeah, and mind yeah, to yeah. ensure that. And I'm very sure they would want mm. to give Nigerians a safe yeah. uh, and secure Christmas experience mm. and in the new year yeah. on high. Yeah. What do you think they should be looking at in, by way of trying to ensure that no criminal activity hinders the experience that Nigerians anticipate. All right, my 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 uh, my view about that, or what I'm going to recommend with regards to that, is that uh, there is a need to up game in terms of intelligence. Uh, when you have actionable intelligence, you are able to even prevent. Uh, criminals from carry out their activities and when you prevent them from carry out their activities by boxing them up you even you know you don't give them the room to even plan so there is a need for them to you know to uh, hope their intelligence gathering and, and I think that one of the ways by which this can be done is by working together you know, as security a, a, a agencies and in terms of personnel to personnel, because I always say that when you grade Nigeria security agencies, they have more comparative advantage in some areas. By the time they work together, you know, intelligence gathering will be, you know, improved. And then I, I believe that they will be able to serve the people more better in terms of providing security. At the end of the day, we pray to God that we have a hitch-free, uh, safe and secure Christmas experience. And we're actually in the new year yeah. with uh, big smiles on our face and hope in our hearts that the year that is uh, coming ahead will be a fruitful and uh, prosperous one for us all. Dr. Said, thank you very much for the analysis. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, thank uh, you. You know, join us this morning. Thank, thank you for you. stopping by. That is our conversation on security and what Nigerians need to understand about uh, the journey ahead, especially as we count down to the Christmas um, celebration this weekend, and of course beyond. We'll take a quick break. When we do come back, we're going to talk about the new notes, CBN's position, and how things are shaping up following the release of the redesigned notes across the country this past week. Join us after the break.
Welcome back to the show. Safi Abekwe Show live on TV Gotel from our studio here in Bajaburi Hills. Check us on uh, YouTube and Facebook if you want to watch the show on the go. Our stream on Facebook is at facebook.com forward slash Safia. On TV Gotel on YouTube, you can subscribe to TV Gotel Live so you can stay up to date with uh, the conversations on the program. Let's talk about money. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria has, of course, uh, rolled out of given the bank's green light from December 15 to roll out the new redesigned notes in three denominations 1,500 naira, or not 1,500, but the 1,000 naira denomination, the 500 naira denomination, and the 200 uh, naira denomination. They've been redesigned and it's part of CBN's uh, policy or plans to take back some sort of control of Nigeria's. Uh, financial flows because there are so many irregularities and so many funds that are not uh, being easily tracked by the apex bank and if you cannot track it you cannot uh, control it uh, basically so uh, the notes have been out and about even though there are widespread concerns about accessibility because to date I haven't seen uh, really uh, face to face uh, the new notes but this is uh, a concern that has been echoed across the country because uh, for many people there's, there are shortages even though the CBN still says we still have January before uh, the old notes in those set denominations uh, become, cease to become legal tender. But we're also going to talk about the impact of this release on the economy vis-a-vis -vis how CBN hopes to uh, implement its new cash withdrawal policy which is also set uh, to take effect from the 9th of uh, the year 2023. Let's bring in our expert who is a former banker and an economist, Mr. Benjamin uh, Ngabla is joining us this morning to help unpack the issues and of course address some of these rising uh, concerns from different parts of the country. Mr. Benjamin, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much for stopping by. Good morning. Right. Welcome. The viewers, thank you for having me. Have you seen, first of all, as a banker, have you seen the new notes? I have not seen it and I'm not worried about it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, first of all, we're talking about counterfeiting, right? Yeah. Um, and also we're talking about acceptability earlier this morning before we started the show. Yeah. Uh, there, were, there was a viral video last week about a bus conductor rejecting the new note, saying he doesn't, he doesn't, he has not seen this type of money before and he's not going to accept it because he, he doesn't even know whether this is it's really, uh, you know, acceptable. Yeah. That boils down to information or lack of information. However, we're also seeing concerns about counterfeiters coming in uh, with their own counterfeit money because many Nigerians are not really fully aware of the security features and are not fully uh, used to these notes. So let's first of all get your take on your observations of the rollout itself from December 15 to date. Uh, because you yourself, yourself uh, uh, has said that you've, you've not seen it. Um, what do you make of it and what do you make of the response of Nigerians to the release of the new notes? Yeah, just like the earlier issues you read, <laughs> I was in, I was in a in Joss throughout the last week and a friend joined me from Abuja and he was telling me that people are rejecting that money from him. No, I didn't see that. He said he had it on him, but I didn't bother looking for it. So people are rejecting. And some people also, when they pay money, they don't want to collect the old note as a change back to themselves. But I think I, I, I blame the government for, for not making it popular. The truth is this. The explanation came in on social media, but there are some people that doesn't bother. The people doesn't have access to social media. So I expected that all radio stations and television stations, public or private, should have been rolled out jingles, apart from jingles, playlists, that will explain the period and how the rolling out the new notes is going to look like. They failed in that because, to me, they didn't see it as a popular thing, but it is affecting people. There are people that don't have a phone to go to social media to see these things, and they find it difficult to sit down at home. But some, even when driving, like I they are driver, he has radio to listen to. And the way they release their jingles, is even NTA and other big stations, you realize that it is somehow not too straightforward, too explained. 
So I feel that they should do more on the, making sure that all television stations are paid well, all radio stations are paid well, private or public, so that it should reach to everybody how the, the, how the processes. You, how, the last time we wrote that was when we were, um, when the CBN was releasing the 1000 Naira. Yeah. Right? And I would say that there was very it's adequate exciting. and enough information about the new notes, about some of these security features. What is the cost of this lack of information uh, on Nigerians and what it could do to become counterproductive to what CBN is trying to do? Yes, I said earlier that some of the explanations are, are, are not so much um, in detail. It's sketchy. It's sketchy, yeah. Let me use that English. It's very good. But the truth is that even if they are going to talk about the processes, like, okay, some people believe that when immediately the money is released on the 15th, they shouldn't collect the old notes. Mm. Though in the letter released by Central Bank, it was clearly stated that those money will still remain legal tender mm. from now till 31st of uh, mm. January. Mm. But how many people understand what a legal tender is? Well, what are your fears? Because uh, when you look at the reactions that yeah. we have, and also there was this uh, viral video that we also bantered on this morning, yeah. looking at uh, fake near notes already in circulation. and. Most Nigerians don't understand the security features on the <laughs> You see, on that one, I, I, I laughed because there is nothing you do with all Nigerians to understand the security features of, of, so of we're money. Not, we're not uh, talking about the, the, the physical, yes. the physical features. Yes. Yeah, that one is uh, is. Um, you see, there's something I want us to know. Uh, look at the policy as it goes. By 9th of January, possibly we don't need much money in our hands. Mm because we are going 100% cashless, where you are not supposed to have more than 20,000 naira in your hands. So the money are not supposed to made in such a way that it will be too much in circulation. I was having some discussions this morning before I came, and I called some friends in the bank. They said not more than three or four banks have the new notes in the now. Right. And some of them went to withdraw in the central. You know, money deposit banks go to central bank to withdraw and deposit. So when they went, they said that the money is not much again. They are waiting for reimbursement by uh, from Abuja. So this is by design then? Yes. It's not because of shortages? No, no. It's, I, I don't think it's because, because of shortages. Because even is trying to go cashless, and that's Wait, why yes. it doesn't need to print Exactly. So you know, you know, we spend a lot of money on printing, printing. of money, mm -hmm. which is not necessary. Mm -hmm. So by the time it is January and these monies are printed so much, now what would the money do? It will be kept in the central bank doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a need for people to understand that this money must not be in circulation to that uh, to that level. So that's why they are even making sure that before the 9th of January, all these ATMs are, 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 are uh, configured mm -hmm. to dispense 200 naira. Because if you go to ATM machine, there are cases that these monies are put in. And if you put 1,000 naira note in 500 naira note, it will dispense it as if it is 500 naira that is there. Mm. Let me explain more. Mm. Now, if you put 1,000 naira note inside 500 naira cassette, mm. if it is dispensing, it will dispense at each each one note is 500 naira. Mm. That means if you draw 20,000, it will give you 40,000 naira. Mm. You understand? So the cases has to be uh, uh, configured. configured so that it will give the accurate money. Mm. These are some of the plans CBN is working with so that the cash in circulation will reduce. People should go into thinking how to transact um, on the, um, Digital, electronically. Uh, electronically, and with that now, we don't need those money to be much in circulation. But yeah. with this again, there's need for continuous education for, because a lot of persons do not, in fact, they tend not to understand what is happening. I think that and was one of the things I started with because still, I still look at the the, the information is not ruling out very well, and it's not getting to where people should. supposed to listen to. Like I said, if people in Adama State could get this one on GoTel, uh, radio in particular, because it's not everybody that doesn't have television. If people are living, are living in abject poverty, you know, they don't care. They don't even need television any longer. So you see, people need to have this radio station because virtually, if you go to villages in the morning, you see virtually everybody holding radio by his ear. So these are where I think uh, uh, CBN and the government should invest more money in making sure that this information reaches the last man that's supposed right. to hear it. Right. And, and do you think between now and January 31st, we have ample time to see this transition through? Do you think, do you think this is ample time enough for CBN to see through the implementation of um, what it's trying to do with, you know, taking out the old legal tender in three different categories and ensuring that from, January, from 31st January onwards, we're now using 
the uh, the new yeah. design notes. To me, the time is very enough. The fact still remains that even if you give it to 31st December 2023, mm -hmm. I can still assure you that there are some people that will not get this information. Mm -hmm. And there are still going to be people that will still kick against it as if the time is not much enough. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing is to just make sure that the information gets to people properly, the awareness should be created seriously, mm -hmm not only on social media let it be gone all the radio stations all the television stations if possible they're supposed to be even town criers yeah. in villages and other places so that at least let the information get to people and what government wants to achieve with this i was listening to sunny uh, um sanusi lami the sanusi this morning on uh, tiktok and he was explaining the importance of this which i totally agree with him it will reach a point where corruption must go down by itself because if government want to give out if uh, people in government for example want to give out contract and inflate it to get kickbacks mm -hmm. it has to be paid into their accounts directly mm -hmm. so if efcc or other, or other authorities want to trace how the money is being spent they can trace it to who it's easy for forensics exactly exactly and, 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 and if we can revisit this whole thing again to state the objectives as a former banker yourself as someone who understands the workings of the financial sector yeah what are the benefits of why cbn is doing this i think let me start by saying one like i said earlier it is going to reduce corruption to the minimum mm. because people will not have too much money in their hands and that means people will have to at all costs transfer money from bank to bank mm. which will be easily traced and controlled by cbn and the agencies that take care of corruption mm. then two security like i said when i came here the other time i said it, by by 31st of uh, uh, january maybe the 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 adopters the the people that mm. <laughs> the kidnappers may begin to ask for money to be paid through their bank account because people will not even have money at home mm. to do that so that one will maybe a style will be changed again mm -hmm. and the next thing is that it will help our politics which is very important so people will be decide since you don't have any benefits of getting and use it instantly people will still have to vote their conscience at this time around mm -hmm. the money will not be too much available for people to give out to buy votes mm -hmm. they will not have it the are even already kicking against yeah, especially the cash that. withdrawal limit yeah. yeah um saying that it will negatively affect their campaigning and things like that and obviously i have no sympathy for them because i said if there's <laughs> nothing illegal with where the money is coming from you should have no problem sending the yes. money to um, people's accounts whether it's logistics or whatever it is um but but how, how do you see this whole thing playing out in especially looking at what could go wrong how do you see cbn putting together a mechanism that serves as a shock absorber for for you know for for for, for the short period that we're going to experience this roll up because a lot of people are saying that we could experience what happened in the 90s where you have black markets who are selling local currency like if you're looking for cash go ask social person he can give you in whatever denomination but you have to pay a price for it because that is that is also very likely isn't it uh, it's not going to be possible because even the black marketers will not get the money at bulk mm. because they don't have the right to withdraw the money bulk mm. and people will be scared because i mean but you can't withdraw with uh, all the charges that have been put here uh, you know the five percent the ten percent uh, processing fee that uh, the CBN no if you look at the withdrawal they said as uh, if the individual can take five million naira mm. and corporate body will take ten million naira, but that will certainly be based on urgency which will only be given once in a month and the processes will have to, do, to go through the approval to the gmd of a bank so it's not everybody that will be patient enough just because you want to go and sell currency to go into that kind of hectic issues to just get the money to go and sit down and sell so and i see if you look at what happens in 1983 or 84 when that that issue happened there was no processes put in place here if you look at it there are pos already all over the town now most of these POS now will have to be in shops very soon some of them will go to shops some of them will go into places where you buy and take things in petrol stations and thereabout so it will ease the, the the situation there then the preparation now is perfect for the rolling out of this uh, policy bringing in the pos uh, conversation there's this uh, uh, story i read this morning talking about the cash limit and pos operators are already giving that's CBN's ultimate. What do you make of these concerns about POS uh, operators? 
you know, the, the, when I was here the last time, I just said something. People tend to misunderstand what exactly POS is. Yes, yes, yes. It's a point of sales. Mm -hmm. It's not point of withdrawal or point mm -hmm. of deposit. Mm -hmm. The point of sales is meant to be placed in places where you buy things. So that when you go to petrol station, enter your card, they fuel you, you people remove your card and pay. If you go to uh, malls and other places, it was not meant for business. And that is why even the people that are using point of sales are cheating people. Mm -hmm. By the time you just pay people through point of sale, there's a commission meant for the person that is using that point of sale. But you realize that most times they will still charge you. If you realize that charges are coming down, so if you do 100,000, they will charge only 300 naira or 200 naira. Knowing fully that, they have commissions that are going to be paid to them by the bank based on what they're using the, the, the point of sale. So there are, there are incentives made by CBN and the banks that if you're using the POS to sell things, you even get some commissions on it. So it was not meant for withdrawals or deposit. So I, there are concerns, I don't know how to handle it, but to me, whether they like it or not, gradually that business will shut down. So we're, we're benefiting from saving costs in terms of printing the money. One. We're also benefiting from the sanitization of uh, the financial sector itself because CBN is going to get back a significant control of yes, of, of, of the cash flow and the make system. monetary policies that will affect right. the nation positively. And you also predict that this would uh, curtail corruption significantly, Certainly, especially yeah. after everything is implemented yeah. um, in the month of January. How security would you, yeah, aspects yeah, yeah and, and security also. Right. How would you, um, what would your advice be to Nigerians who are reluctant about accepting this policy in good faith because that in itself could undermine it if this whole transition becomes very unpopular we could be harming ourselves because cbn has already chosen a path for us and the best thing would be to trust the instinct or the policy the decision or direction of the cbn and go with it yeah. uh, with the benefits as well as whatever it, it comes how do you see this whole situation ending if if cbn has its way and there's no review because there's still the politics involved. CBN being invited to the Senate to, do, to defend its position and things like that. Yeah. Uh, we understand that this week, possibly the CBN governor could attend uh, the Senate hearing or House of Representative hearing on this particular issue, whether it's a cash withdrawal limit, especially where people are still talking back and forth about. How do you see this ending if CBN does not revise everything that it has set in motion already? The only fear I have is uh, this morning I was watching Berekete family mm -hmm. and uh, Honorable Gudaje mm -hmm. came in with yeah. some a lot of facts according to him mm -hmm. that uh, the stamp duties the stamp duty accounts, running into right. hundreds of trillions right. that have been diverted by Central Bank. Mm -hmm. I loved it because I expected that if they had done what he was talking in, mm. why was no, those things not been at the public uh, uh, disposal mm. far before now? Mm. So I begin to think that there are strategies by the politicians to scare CBN, maybe because of some, maybe some shit they must have mm. find themselves into it. Mm. Maybe they may come up with a lot of things that will scare this man. But I believe that Bari cannot be scared, I'm mm. sure. Mm. And uh, my prayer is that they should not scare him. But every other thing they are doing is to just make sure that they have their way mm -hmm. during these political campaigns and mm -hmm. still continue to loot our monies. Right, right. Which I believe that people should ask questions. Mm -hmm. If you think you are in doubt, don't just be stubborn and be on your mm -hmm. thinking that this is just the right thing. If you think it is not fine, why can't you meet with other people that understand these things? Ask questions. Mm -hmm. I think Nigerians should learn to not to just believe in what they know alone. Mm. They should browse, they should ask questions, people that are supporting, you know there are people that when politicians just speak, they, they just believe what the politicians are saying, right. simply because uh, right. Right. So I, 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 I want them to, to, to desist from that thing and, and come and ask questions because it they is going to give us a better Nigeria, right. I believe. And that is the end game for not just the CBN, but for every patriotic Nigerian, for this country to be better, to grow, and to prosper, not just for one set of people, but for every uh, one involved. Mr. Benjamin, as always, it's good to uh, hear your thoughts and insight on this a very important issue. Thank you so much. for Thank you so much. And we appreciate the information you're sharing with our viewers as always. Right, and this is where we like to draw the curtains on today's edition uh, of the program. Thank you very much for joining us on Safia Breakfast Show. We'll be back tomorrow live at 8 a.m. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Have a nice day ahead. My name is Brenda Ender.